Python on Hardware News. Okay, Lady Ada, this week. Yeah. Um, so okay. six point two point oh beta three is released. We we're doing a bunch of betas, but we're also just yeah. fixing so much stuff. Um, we added the second USB serial, so if you want to have like a non-REPL serial port, we've added that. We've added some bitmap tool. Thank you so much to the community for adding these contributions. Uh, I've done a lot of display I/O work. I've also seen a lot of stuff happen with label presence port, bug fixes in ESP32 S2 and RP2040. Those are going through a lot of churn. Uh, we're even planning our next beta already because uh, we're just fixing so many bugs and adding so much stuff. So yeah. um, you know, keep thank you everybody for testing the latest builds. Um, we're getting so many more contributors, and uh, it's really awesome to see people coming in and saying, "Here's what I want Circuit Python to do." And giving us code to do it, or reviewing code, or bug fixing, or bug reporting. Um, it's a team effort. And uh, if you have an RP2040 in some form, like a Pico, or now a Feather, mm. um, the good news is you can get lots of updates. There's lots of enhancements, lots of fixes, and more. Um, I did see uh, a discussion on Twitter which is never really a good idea. I don't, but, I don't even know why you're starting with that. But someone was saying, they were t trying to compare like CircuitPython and MicroPython, and the, the two have different goals. Yeah. But one of the things that someone said is like, oh, there's always a lot of activity going on in CircuitPython land because we're, we're doing a lot of updates and we're supporting a lot of yes. hardware. So I'll say this. And that's good. I'll say this. There's, there's always trade-offs. And the way that we're doing CircuitPython is you want the easiest and the latest and greatest hardware support for everything. So that's why um, MicroPython, for instance, one of the things that people do is they're make, if they're making hardware for it, they'll fork their version, they fork MicroPython, and that's like frozen in time for their thing, and yeah. then they're not doing any more updates on it. Where CircuitPython, we're trying to get as many boards as possible that support CircuitPython, that support all these libraries, that support all the hardware, and grow that ecosystem. So you get, and anytime you're putting CircuitPython on something that supports it, you're getting all the latest the latest and everything. look, I mean, it's, it's good. We're fixing a lot of bugs. I mean, people are saying, like, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. And we actually go and fix it. You know, we also added, like, MP3 support today, which is really cool. That's like, cool. that's, you know, that's a PR. And so that will be part of the next beta release. Um, yeah. It's it's just, uh, you know, we, you know, Scott, who is the project lead, made the dis decision really early. And I've sort of, you know, been, been reluctantly, but now enthusiastically excited, you know, interested in, in his decision, which is um, make... It's, it's better to have lots of changes if it means a development cycle keeps going than to let the project stagnate yeah. because um, people are, and, and this is kind of true, there's contributors are attracted to projects that have contributors. You know, if, if I go to, and look, it's true, if I go to a GitHub repo and I haven't seen any, you know, events occurring, any pull requests or issues closed in the last five years, I'm going to assume the project's dead, right? And so... If you see like, wow, there's a lot of activity, people are, are contributing and responding um, and moving, I think that will attract people who, yeah. who want to have their contrib contributions merged in and developed on. And I also, think the CircuitPython team does that really well. The hardware that you have gets tons of you know free updates forever. If it supports CircuitPython, every time there's an update to CircuitPython, you get new features. Yeah. So and new hardware supported. So I just wanted to like you know because we have this section that we talked about Python on hardware. And it's a new beta release. This is really good news because if you like things like the Pico and the RP any of the RP twenty forty stuff, any of the uh, feathers or you know Sparkfun has their version of a feather and it supports Circuit Python. Like every there's so many things you get with with this now um, that we think that we're going to keep doing this. Like the more new features and the more hardware supported, the better. And keeping that vibe of it's as easy as possible. And as the RP2040 launched, one of the things that we looked at is, so when people want to do something fast and easy and, and learn from, mm -hmm. what are they using? They're using CircuitPython. So uh, with that being said, the Feather RP2040 is out. This is one of the easiest, best ways to um, explore this new chip from Raspberry Pi and then also use CircuitPython. And then you get the full Feather ecosystem. Yes, so, and StemIQT plugin and 8 megabytes of yeah. flash. It's, it's still, you know, this, I, I don't want to call it beta. I'm pretty sure the hardware is good to go. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in people, if, they, if you find any weirdnesses with it, uh, open up issues or let us know in the community yeah. um, because I'm, you know, this is our first board with this chip. And the first board of every chip is always kind of where we're like, 
oh, hey, look at that. We didn't realize, you know, X, Y, Z, and now we do. So mm. I, I, doing this board definitely helped me design the Itsy Bitsy and Cutie Pie. I had to do a revision of each because of things that I learned. And, and just to um, bring this back, so if you did a bunch of CircuitPython work, on the NF, uh, the Nordic NRF52840, that code, you know, besides the Bluetooth part, works on a RP2040. Yeah. So, like, this the is... PWMIO the PWMIO is actually the same thing. So the code yeah. that does the audio over PWM is the same. I mean, we had to adapt it for the hardware, but, you know, that was first introduced on the NRF52840, and now it's available on this chip, too. So we have... I haven't counted the number of chipsets, but it's probably... Six or... Well, six. the STM... F4, yeah. I mean, that's like hundreds of different chips, right? Because there's like a, a bunch of them. But, you yeah. know, of families, I think we support a good like eight eight families of chips. Yeah. And then there's things like DSP32, S2, and ESP32. Yeah, that's a family. 32, uh, there's the S- C. Well, the C3 right. we're probably not going to support quite yet. The S3 will support. No. I think there's actually a PR for the S3. So, like, yeah, we're, we're moving along. Um, Circuit Python was on Tom's hardware podcast. Uh, Scott was on it. He you blew their mind. Talked to Les, uh, who we just sent a um, feather over yeah. in the UK, and uh, Scott also talked about maybe running Circuit Python directly on a Raspberry Pi one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Python three one zero zero eight six is available for testing. It's big news if you're into Python. Deep dive with Scott is this Friday. News around the web. You could check out some of the projects. This is so getting started Picos. with Circuit Python. Mm-hmm. The Pico, Neopixel LEDs. Keyboards and bananas. Yeah. And, um, you know, the other, pie. The other thing, the pie. Um, a lot of folks are uh, exploring Moo because it's an easy way to mm-hmm. do things with CircuitPython and these boards. Um, more Cutie Pie projects. BrainCraft Hat running Raspberry Pi Pico using a Pi to Zero adapter. Mm. An adapter for a Pi Pico on a Featherwing. Look at this cute keyboard. Yeah. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico and CircuitPython. This is a keyboard. Again, this is what we see happening. Um, if you want to do a keyboard and you have a Pico, the easiest way to do it right now and to build on top of an expanded that's open and you just get all the support is has been Circuit Python. So we're happy to see um, uh, that getting out there. Um, here's a light sensor. This is um, using MicroPython. This is a feather wing little servo. Oh, it's the Dynamixel. Yeah. And then Scott is also, Scott's been doing the rounds. Um, Simple Electronics Podcast, number 14. And then uh, this is oh, the... Oh, it's Lars. Yeah, this is a little round display. The tab I just showed on the show and tell. Yeah. And here's another Pico with a display. Look, that's going to work great with CircuitPython because we have great display yeah. support. So as you can tell, there's a theme. If you really like keyboards and you really like displays, Pico, and you really we like have displays, really good native display support for CircuitPython. Believe me, it's like, it's it's not going to be, a, you know, as low level but um the high level stuff is amazing i mean you can have objects in front of other objects and we do clipping yeah. and 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 bitmaps and um you know beautiful fonts all this stuff which is uh, a lot harder than you'd think actually getting good font support but it's all in there yeah and we've been working on it for years so you'll continue to see a bunch of um projects and more um there's a neat python comic Oh, that, yeah, they're making uh, that's in there. Python. You can see all of our guides, all of our libraries. We are up to 303, and we still have a couple more events uh, coming up. We're a sponsor of the Open Hardware Summit. Oh, we, coming up. We just sent um, cutie pies. So if you're, swag bag. if you're part of the Open Hardware Summit this year, the swag bag will have a cutie pie. Cool. Pie cons coming up and more. So that is our Python and hardware news this week. Lots of stuff going on. Nice.